Our first guest tonight is the professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York and the author of phenomenal physics books such as Hyperspace, which completely changed the world for me, where he explains parallel universes, time warps, and the tenth dimension, and Visions, a book that explains how science will revolutionize the 21st century. Today we're talking about the physics of Christmas magic. Dr. Michio Kaku joins us via satellite from our bureau in New York City. Welcome, Dr. Kaku. Well, I'm glad to be on. Well, I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, it's going to be the Mutual Admiration Society here today, sir, because uh, I have described myself as a drooling fanboy of, uh, of yours to everyone here at, at, at Tech TV. So this is, I'm going to do my best to keep it together and not uh, geek out too hard. Uh, it's okay. really nice to, to meet you via satellite. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so today we're talking about uh, Christmas and uh, how science views some of the great Christmas myths that have uh, uh, built up over, over the years. And for thousands of years, people have wondered about the Christmas star that supposedly pointed to Bethlehem. So what does science say? Well, astronomers can recreate the night sky of 5 BC when Jesus Christ was supposedly born, and there was nothing special about that night sky, just a conjunction of a few planets. However, a comet is perhaps the most likely candidate for the Christmas star. If a comet soars vertically north, it will linger in the night sky for weeks at a time and give the appearance of being a star shining down on Bethlehem. So these mysterious icy messengers from far beyond the solar system are in fact the leading candidate for the Christmas star. Uh, there was a guest on the screensavers yesterday who suggested that it may have been a supernova. What do you think about that? Well, if it was a supernova, we might have been fried to a crisp. Uh, the last supernova in our neighborhood ignited about 100,000 years ago. And these are very dangerous objects because they can, in fact, wipe out entire solar systems. But the problem is, how does a star point? The only way a star can point, I think, is by having a comet's tail point in the direction of Bethlehem. One of the great myths that sprung up, of course, about uh, Christmas is the Santa Claus myth, traveling around the universe, uh, delivering gifts to the good boys and uh, good girls of the world. And, of course, his magical sleigh is propelled by reindeer. And uh, we're wondering today if reindeer can actually fly, and how could magnetism play a role in the uh, flying reindeer? Hey, well, don't laugh. It's possible. Question. Reindeers can fly, Peter Pan can fly, the Lords of the Ring can fly, Harry Potter has a broom, but with super magnets, we can in fact duplicate levitation in the laboratory. Now, at the present time, we can actually levitate a train. These are called maglev trains. They hover just a little bit above the surface of a rail. However, in order to have flying machines that take us into, uh, into space, we really have to have room temperature superconductors, and we don't have them yet. One day, when we physicists develop room temperature superconductors, we should be able to create super magnetic fields, and at that point, unleash a second industrial revolution. What I'm really looking forward to is lots of flying cars, because people can handle the driving on the ground so well already. <laughs> So how could Santa Claus uh, really deliver all those, those gifts in one night? There's this thing that I've read that said he would have to go so fast that it would actually blur him into spam uh, to get around the world in time. But you have some suggestions on how possibly he could deliver those gifts. Well, he would have to teleport himself several thousand times per second. And he would have to clone himself into hundreds of copies of himself. And he would have to have the power of telekinesis in order to scatter billions of presents almost instantly. Now, teleportation is perhaps one of the most active areas in quantum physics at the present time. We can actually teleport individual subatomic particles. A photon, for example, a particle of light, has actually been teleported in the laboratory now. But that's a far cry from teleporting Santa Claus thousands of times per second on Christmas Eve. We'll be lucky if we can teleport a few molecules within the next decade. So if I understand it correctly, the more complex the organism, the greater the possibility that when you're teleporting it and reconstructing it, you could end up with something like the, the brundle fly? That's right. There's always possibilities of tremendous quantum mistakes. Uh, at the present time, we figured that perhaps in several decades, we may be able to perhaps teleport a virus 
But that's about the limit of present-day technologies where we can only teleport individual subatomic particles. Now, Santa Claus would also have to have the power of telekinesis, the ability to manipulate objects by simply thinking about it. Well, we physicists know that there are four fundamental forces. Gravity, which is attractive, the electromagnetic force, and the two nuclear forces. Unfortunately, none of these four forces are non-local. They don't allow us to manipulate objects simply by thinking about it. This means that perhaps there may be a fifth force that we haven't discovered yet, but so far we have not seen any evidence for a fifth force that may make telekinesis possible. Could we maybe say the fifth force is love? <laughs> Some people have thought that the fifth force could be psychic power, psionic power, telepathy, you name it. Uh, people have conjectured about what a fifth force can look like. Uh, maybe it's the power of screensavers. We don't know for sure. But we've looked for it. We physicists have looked very hard for a fifth force, and so far we don't see any evidence of a force which can help Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. So science is really uh, arguing against the uh, existence of Santa Claus. And I'd just like to say, Santa, if you're watching, I still believe you, and I really, really want an iPod, the big one. <laughs> and also, by the way, if you want to chat with me tomorrow night, uh, on, my, on my web address, uh, www.mkaku.org, M-K-A-K-U.org, uh, we've logged about 10 million hits so far, uh, perhaps thanks to screensavers. And tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll be having a chat with uh, listeners. So if you want to come on my webpage, I'd be more than happy to chat with you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, we are out of time, so I want to thank you again, Dr. Michio Kaku, for joining us via satellite from New York City. You can read a lot more from Dr. Kaku, as he said, uh, at his website, mkaku.org, or at thescreensavers.com, where we will give you links to buy all of his fabulous books. I cannot recommend Hyperspace enough. It completely changed the way that I viewed our place in the universe.